Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this daily UPSC MCQ series mission 2020 it is and 11th of June today and uh, my request again is that I want your feedback I want to uh, to know that uh, how you uh, people are getting these questions how do you think that uh, what kind of importance uh, is there what is the what is the level of the questions what is the level of explanations and do you think that these are up to th that level of UPSC which we discussed uh, about the prelims paper uh, of the 19 uh, prelims examination so is is there a, a standard that we are following here I think uh, 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 these things are deep and the knowledge that we are gathering day by day that is very important and uh, crucial issues we are uh, adding in our knowledge so let's start the lesson and uh, 11th of June it is in the Hindu paper analysis video uh, please uh, follow those lessons daily and these lessons are also coming daily and uh, so Sundays are off for the Hindu analysis videos but uh, uh, this video will be on a daily basis and I have replaced the PIB lesson here but we are covering all the PIB important formations as you will see in the explanations and uh, question that I am framing I am uh, taking all the sources like PIB uh, magazines or the newspapers and all so these uh, important pendrive courses are available at 60% off and on these numbers you can find them very easily you can inquire about them and the PDF you will get here on the Facebook group and the telegrams link is also given here so uh, anything you can join here question is from Indian Railway Stations Development Corporation regarding the overhaul and the metamorphication of Indian Railway Stations because Indian Railway Stations are very very backward and uh, a lot of crowd is there always they are overcrowded and uh, facilities are not up to that mark security issues and all these are not uh, uh, you know, of uh, a standard level global standard level so we will uh, change the scenario of these uh, stations and the responsibilities given to Indian Railway Stations Development Corporation and it has take up, uh, taken up many uh, examples there all over the country like Chandigarh uh, and uh, Bijwasan in Delhi so these are uh, simple examples but it's not a PSU it's a special purpose vehicle it's not a PSU that's the important thing so this is a wrong statement and uh, certainly uh, by government of India and it has been designed to develop new stations and redevelop existing railway stations. That is the perfect one. It is the main responsibility and it's a joint venture between Aircon, Aircon International uh, which uh, earlier was Indian Railway Construction and all uh, that company and it's a major PSU of the Ministry of Railways and the Rail Land Development Authority that was established in 2006. So these two are having equities here. Aircon is having 51% of the stakes and 49% are there with the RLDA. So this is the joint venture between uh, uh, both of them. So that's important. Second is correct option. So only two would be the right option here. And let's start and uh, read about this IRSDC. A corporation special purpose vehicle of government of India that has been designed for this particular responsibility. It's a joint venture and Aircon is having 51%. R RLDA is having 49% equity or the shares and uh, it was incorporated under the companies act 1956 in 2012 so that means uh, it's a perfect company now and the aircon uh, which used to be indian railway construction company now it is called aircon international limited because the uh, work area is extended extended to uh, uh, abroad also to many countries around 30 countries it has served till now and in 1976 it was established under the companies act of 1956 and it's a important PSU under the Ministry of Railways so that is important and well known for undertaking challenging infrastructure projects mainly in the difficult terrains and all it has created a lot of uh, uh, infrastructure for railways so that's important 200 major pro pro projects across the globe in more than 31 countries so that's a great thing about it next rail land development authority or we call it rail bhumi vikas pradhikaran indian government authority and uh, uh, it is for the unused railway land because you see all around the area of a railway station and uh, the rail railway line also railway occupies a lot of uh, area of land and that is under ministry of railway so for the development of it for the uh, non tariff uh, uh, earning from this particular uh, uh, land part and, and, and anyhow we, you, uh, we are able to utilize that, that particular area so that thing that plan that those policies are made up by rail land Deve development authority and remember that non tariff revenues they are earning from here like for uh, with uh, for the advertisements and all and uh, uh, this was established in November 2006 okay 
so that's the case and it has 49 percent equity share in the indian railway station development corporation the news which came in pib ministry of railways uh, the irsdc enters into tripartite agreement with the french national railways sncf it's a french language so sncf and afd a french agency afd is ready to give 7 lakh euros uh, in a financing project and uh, they will be developing important railway station uh, uh, program and this agenda in india and uh, irs dc entered in this agreement with this sncf and afd body so that is the case and uh, this was the information that appeared and on the behalf of that i have created that particular question and there will be no financial liability on the irs dc or the indian railways that is the case government is taking here next international center for automotive technology icat icat has been in news for many uh, months now uh, many times i have seen in the pib data we had discussed about that it is there icat is there in manasar guru uh, gurugram uh, earlier it used to be called as uh, uh, gurga so uh, it is there near delhi not in new delhi so this is wrong and second one premier testing and certification agency owned by ministry of road transport and highways you see ministry of road transport and highways it authorizes uh, this particular body but owned by is a different thing owned it is owned by actually ministry of heavy industries so that is the case so that is a very uh, tricky thing to ask and upsc may confuse you with these kind of things and in rush you will think that it's a ministry of road transport only because it's a relatable work because it is the premier testing agency for the vehicles and all so that is the case but it is only authorized by this ministry and owned by ministry of heavy industry and public enterprises so that is the case m o h i p e and uh, both are wrong options so d none would be the answer here you can see uh, the icat director dinesh tyagi he actually gave this uh, uh, handed over this uh, important certificate of bs6 compliance norm bs6 bharat stage 6 the most important issue we are pushing it very hard euro norms started in year 2000 and then in india uh, they came as bs3 standards bharat stage norm standards after that in april 17 for whole india bs4 became mandatory and now we will skip bs5 so bs5 will not be there and we will jump to straight bs6 so from april 2020 this bs6 norms would be mandatory here and for the first time bharat stage 6 norms for the two-wheeler segment this is handed over uh, handed over by director icat dinesh tyagi to top officials of the original equipment manufacturers so oem that is the important case and uh, issue is that uh, it, these are much more capable in controlling pollution these engines are expensive if you uh, compare bs3 bs4 from bs6 then bs6 would certainly be more expensive so, so some price add would be there and already this automobile sector is uh, going through the 18 years lowest uh, phase the steep decline was there in the sales 20 percent uh, sales were declined in may of uh, may month so it's a kind of a challenging situation but they are pushing it very hard and they are again uh, going for uh, these electrical vehicles and they are ado faster adoption and for 2023 and 2025 they have certain targets till 2025 150 cc and the below vehicles they will be mandatorily following bs6 uh, norms so again uh, uh, sorry uh, they will not follow bs6 they will be actually electric vehicles below 150 cc so these are new challenges consistent challenges for the for the automobile industry so it will hit very very hard but uh, environment is the main concern here and we are uh, pledging a lot of things on all the areas like solar area wind area, wind area and uh, this uh, emission issues which is they are uh, uh, relatable with the automobile sector so that is hitting hard but bs6 would be a mandatory condition from april 2020 in cities you see big cities like ncr region they have already pushed it uh, from 2018 only and uh, this uh, fuel of uh, bharat stage 6 norm that is already going on so ncr region it was taken first and for whole country it will be the date of april 2020 from then bs6 norms bharat stage norms uh, they will be applicable and all these uh, vehicles they need to upgrade their engines okay and uh, the new manufacturers they will come up with bharat stage 6 norms so that so that, that is the case 
so this icat is a premier testing and certification agency many facilities are there with it and authorized by ministry of road transport icat manasar gurugram haryana 1100 crore rupees uh, facility was established here and nhv uh, which is uh, uh, noise vibration and hardness these kind of testing fuel testings are avail available here and it has got the center of excellence award also for this nvs category so these are important facilities which are available here and all kind of testings can be done for the vehicles so that is why it is a very important one it's an international center so it's a uh, it's it's of a very high word standard in manisar you can read whole text here it is all given here uh, that when uh, it was enforced uh, when uh, it was uh, mandatorily uh, became applicable in india and uh, uh, various issues are there because in india the health cost of air pollution has been assessed at 3% of the gdp 3% our health budget is 1% of the gdp around 1% of the gdp and the air pollution impact on the health is around 3% of the gdp so you can understand the genuine reason here and what is the reason that we are pushing it so hard next lothal as i discussed with you lothal is in gujarat it is in bhal region of gujarat it is not in haryana so this is wrong ahmedabad bhavnagar anand districts they are commonly called as bhal region and there lothal is located it's a indus valley site why it is famous it is famous for a early world's earliest non dockyard okay where ships uh, uh, were coming and artificial uh, canal was created with the bricks and all so it was a very advanced system lothal was a engineering marvel it was a great grid system based city all kinds of facilities uh, drainage uh, and uh, the grid system bathrooms uh, and uh, these uh, wells in every house and all these kind of things were found in lothal city so very very advanced city and the dockyard also was very famous so it was a very important harappan city and uh, it was between the sindh area and the saurashtra peninsula so uh, this uh, second statement is actually correct first is again wrong because till now it has not got the world heritage award it should have got but it is still in the tentative list so first is wrong second is correct two only is the right option here you can see lothal and gujarat why in news because india and portugal they have joined hands in setting up a maritime museum in lothal and gujarat it will be administered by the portuguese navy Portuguese were the first people who came to India in 1498. Vasco da Gama came in India uh, in 1940, 1498. So it was the first Britishers came hundred years later, and uh, here uh, Portuguese uh, they have their own uh, maritime museum, navy museum in their country. So they will be administer administering this uh, important maritime museum, which is about to come in Lothal, Gujarat. This is the Bhal region, and here this Gujarat, uh, Gujarat's uh, Lothal uh, city was. Okay, you can see the river Sabarmati River rising in Aravallis in uh, Rajasthan, and it is coming in Gujarat and flowing through these cities of Ahmedabad and all. And uh, this is the Gulf of Khambat, and this is the region. And you see this whole region, the Kutch Peninsula was under water, under sea water, uh, three four thousand years back. So uh, it was uh, a kind of a access to the Sindh area also through waterway. So this dockyard was very much important here. and they did not have to circle the the kathiawada peninsula it was going through this area because it was under sea water so you can see lothal here and surkotota where the evidences of uh, uh, of uh, horses they were found and dholavera in kutch district it's a kutch peninsula it's kathiawada peninsula and amri chanudara these are the sindh area of pakistan uh, which is uh, today pakistan that time it was india only and uh, this was the access from this area so very important region and this was created like that it is the original picture and these kind of bricks are from that time 5000 years back and this was the artificial canal that was made and a dockyard it was a kind of a great dockyard where these uh, ships were coming and this was the opening of this particular canal and you see these brick these bricks they look like they uh they were established uh, in a very near past but it was thousands of years back and same same kind of uh, uh these uh, bricks we find today in india okay this was a bathroom and this was the water drainage system very advanced city very important engineering marvel of thousands of years of uh, years back of, of example and uh, we knew about all these important uh, achievements around 2000 years ago from the 
romans and these uh, uh, egyptians and all now these greek people sorry next many time in news we hear about advanced authorization scheme advanced authorization you see this issue is related to the import issue some exporters in india they would need uh, some raw material which is imported from some other country recently the news came that uh, pakistan's uh, export to india or the india's import from pakistan that is declined to a very low level 92 percent decline was there and uh, then it became very difficult for some exporters in india and under the advanced authorization scheme uh, they got some uh, important duty free imports which was very very necessary as a raw material for export items so b is the answer it is related to the duty free import issue and uh, this ad advanced authorization scheme came long time back and is, it is going on and it was an important information in the Lyman newspaper in january also where they extended this uh, uh, scheme uh, till the 31st of march and after the pulwama attack we actually revoked the mfn status which is a wto's provision most favored nation provision where we had uh, extended MFN, mfn status to pakistan in 1996 but pakistan uh, has uh, not uh, uh, reciprocated till date so we actually revoked it and after that we raised these custom duties around 200 percent so that is why the import from pakistan that came from 34.61 uh, uh, million dollar to 2.84 million dollar in one year so that kind of a decline we observed and uh, that was difficult for some exporters also because some things were needed from pakistan also as a raw material so under the advanced authorization scheme some things were taken as duty free import and you see who is the uh, important authority to give this license that is the director general of foreign trade that is uh, the authorizing body and it uh, has this license and it uh, allows all these uh, exporters who who can get these important raw material as 100% duty exemption scheme under this scheme next national cancer grid very dreaded disease the most dreaded disease of the present world cancer and we do not have 100% cure of that we pray a lot that we very soon uh, are able to get the uh, remedy for that 100% remedy but still the menace is rising and especially in india it is way worse than even advanced countries where it is supposed to be uh, towards a higher level of incidence but here in india more and more cases are coming and till 2035 we will be having around uh, 1.8 million deaths due to cancer and that's a drastic increase in number and uh, uh, these are uh, non-communicable diseases like uh, the diabetes allergies cancers and uh, uh, these uh, stroke and uh, coronary heart disease and all they are killing many many people and this menace is so huge after the communicable disease we have this particular target of ncg and still we are not able to cover that communicable disease targets and we have a bigger target now so it's a big challenge and our health budget is only one percent of the gdp that's a, a strange thing but uh, national cancer grid was announced in august 2012 it was not announced in this last year's budget this is wrong funded by department of atomic energy why because uh, radiotherapy is an important uh, a tool in this cancer treatment so department of atomic energy plays an important role and it funds this national cancer grid and uh, it has uh, uh, made a coordinating center to this uh, tata memorial center for this cancer grid so it's a kind of a group it's a kind of a important grid of uh, many important uh, research institutions and uh, hospitals and their patients their data and all this collaboration is there so that was important started in 2012 funded by government through department of atomic energy not by health this is wrong first is also wrong and uh, third is correct so only three would be the correct option here c is the right answer recently the mou was signed by department of biotechnology which comes under mst ministry of science and technology and the dae department of atomic, atomic energy this atomic energy department that straight comes under pmo prime minister's office not under any kind of ministry directly under pmo so uh, that he is already funding this uh, uh, national cancer grid and it has joined hand with dbt for the cancer research so that is the case and that is the context of it and they may ask you about all these uh, issues and this uh, ncg uh, the network of major cancer centers institutes patient groups and uh, charitable institutions and all and Tata trust is very crucial here and uh, you can see the data which is given here very dangerous 
data we we have here okay so thanks a lot this is all for today's lesson uh, you can get the pdf please go through all the text in the pdf and uh, we will meet again tomorrow thanks a lot keep watching it was